Hello there, my fellow monster hunters, and welcome to another entry in our Witcher Bestiary series. I also hope you brought your cans of raid today, because oh boy you're gonna need them. As you might have inferred from the title already, today we're gonna be talking about bugs. Although technically they are known as insectoids in the Witcher. The category is not actually a stranger to us, as I already made separate episodes on the Kikimor and the Araxe. Today's episode is gonna feature a lot more bugs though, as I will try to overview almost all the other insectoids I didn't cover already, minus the Andrega, which I might cover in the future. Fair warning though, if you are afraid of bugs, this video is gonna have some scary ones. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? To get us started, I'm gonna go over literally the first boss creature from the first Witcher game. A giant, unique beast called the Frightener. This monster lives in the deserts and other places with arid conditions. In appearance, it is very reminiscent of a sandy, green or grey praying mantis. And it can reach a height of more than 3 meters. It has an amazing body structure and lightning quick reflexes. It can survive without food and water for more than a week. It lives in caves and gorges. It hunts near ponds and other water sources. It feeds mainly on desert animals, but it will not hesitate to attack humans if they are there. According to the Witcher Vesemir, they are one of the most dangerous creatures in existence. It is nigh uninvincible in a straight up fight, because of its chitinous plates, especially when controlled by a mage. In battle, it has pretty much all the advantages, size, strength and speed. Even witchers prefer to avoid fighting it if possible. Fortunately, it is sensible to loud noises, which can deafen it and make it entirely defenseless for a little while. Small side note here, this is very evident in the previously mentioned boss fight, where the witchers use bells to defeat it. The first mage to have created a Frightener was the infamous renegade Dagobert Sula, a diligent student of the Zeriganian Masters of Alchemy and a supervisor of the Trial of Grasses carried out at Kaer Morhen, the fortress of the Witchers. Upon beholding the abomination he created, Sula is said to have cried, What have I done? He did destroy the monster, but unfortunately he didn't destroy his notes on how to make it. Our second deadly creature of today, also created by magic, is known as the Koshche. I do apologize if I bungle up the pronunciation, but I do remember the character from the game itself pronouncing it that way. On a flat four-yard carcass, there are four pairs of legs, while the fifth pair is attached to the head area and it has disproportionately large limbs. These are armed with claws covered in sharp needles and bony protrusions. It can easily track its prey with its eyes, located on the columns rising from the body, and it swallows it all with sickle-shaped jaws. The entire body of the Koshche is covered in a strong, chitinous shell. A Koshche is created via rituals like Alzer's double crossing or Frenagal's triangle within a triangle, vile rituals known to very few sorcerers. It is a member of an infamous group of magically created creature, alongside the Frightener, which can cause destruction on a massive scale, while killing people by the dozen. Neither a crab nor a spider, it is tough as nails. Even a witcher might find it difficult to get at the soft meat inside it. It is a mythical beast artificially created by magic, and only the most powerful wizards, familiar with the works of Alzer first hand, are able to create and control a Koshche. The next creature on today's list is the giant centipede. Also known as the Igern or Wygern, not entirely sure there, in elder speech, they are found in the forest of Brocolon and possibly elsewhere. They are about 12 feet in length with dark brown chitinous armor. They are very dangerous and tend to wrap themselves around their victim before poisoning them. The Witcher journals had this to say about them, to quote, Giant centipedes are said to have been raised in the Brocolon forest and released into the world by vengeful dryads. The creatures are believed to be invincible, as they divide into separate beings when cut in half. 
All this is nonsense though, and it only shows how intensely common people fear these venomous monsters as they fear all things which are not human. Giant centipedes are enormous, insect-like monsters which can be found in many places of the world, but they are particularly common in the lands, or more precisely under the lands of Toussaint. There they dwell in close relation with shale mars, for sort of a monstrous symbiosis has developed between them. Giant centipedes feed on the small creatures which eat shale mar dung. Hard chitinous armor covers nearly the entire body of a giant centipede. Sticking out from under this carapace are rows of hooked limbs. Giant centipedes are able to burrow into the ground with shocking speed, only to then appear back on the surface in another place. Once they select a target, they will circle it with determination, trying to get close enough to deliver a blow. They attack primarily with their powerful mandibles, but they also possess glands allowing them to spew acid. The greatest obstacle when fighting centipedes is their thick armor, which can deflect most blows not only from weapons, but also from magic, such as those dealt by simple spells or witcher signs. When attacked with a weapon, they will often parry the blow, then quickly reply with one of their own counters. Thus, the best method for fighting them is to catch them in the Irden trap, keeping them from protecting themselves with their armor or by burrowing into the ground. If the creature rises within a Yirdan sign trap, it will be paralyzed and will not be able to burrow, allowing it to get quite a few hits in. Just make certain to land your hits at the front and not the back, as it is largely immune to attack from there. Once you hit it several times, it will curl up in a protective loop. Make certain to roll away when that happens. Not only is that a guard move that will cause you to do little damage, after a couple of seconds it will swing its body around in a wide sweeping attack before burrowing into the ground and reappear elsewhere. A unique type of giant centipede is called the Pale Widow. This is a much rarer variety dwelling in underground layers owing its name to its unusual pale white coloring. Like the more common giant centipede, its body is covered in hard chitinous armor, with many hooked limbs sticking out from underneath. Some scholars raise these creatures in lab conditions for the properties of their albumen, which can make an excellent base for the brewing of mutagenic potions. The Pale Widow is not particularly strong, but it is a tricky foe to fight, very good at moving about the area and trying to do quick attacks. So keeping a Quen sign or Irden sign up while also moving around is the best bet. The fourth creature on today's docket is the Arachnomorph. Now these are basically straight up giant spiders, introduced in the Hearts of Stone expansion for The Witcher 3. An old Ophiery proverb says, the spider shall never lie down with the fly. A similar saying could gain ground in our land concerning the arachnomorph and everything unable to flee one, which means pretty much all the creatures in the world. True, the tillers of the earth and fellers of trees don't need to fear them in their daily labor, for arachnomorphs, as distant, post-conjunction cousins of common spiders, prefer deep dark caves and sodden swamps. Anyone who does come across them, however, had best hope his conscience is clear and the worldly affairs are in order. For his life shall soon end, as not even the quickest man in the world can outrun them, and only veteran witchers can hope to slay them. Even worse are the more aggressive and dangerous kind known as arachnomorph colossi which are capable of devouring an entire ox in a few seconds. When fighting these creatures, the rule of thumb is to stay mobile. While this applies to fighting all monsters, the arachnomorphs have the ability to spit webbing that can stop a witcher in their tracks, leaving him vulnerable to further attack. They always charge in for a hit while you're tangled in the web. Fortunately, if you are trapped in the webbing, you can still parry their quick attacks, but not their strong or leaping attacks so use that as you will. The spiders, when there's multiple ones, will attack as one if they think the odds are in their favor. But if the witcher starts to attack, they will retreat at quite a surprising speed, leaving the witcher frustratingly out of reach. This could be one of the most effective uses of in and out guerrilla warfare seen by any monster type. So the main job of the witcher will be to slow them down one by one and hit them while dodging their attacks and the web shots of the others. 
Quick personal note here, I really hate the arachnomorphs as foes. The first time you encounter them, you might consider them like mid-tier enemies and not that dangerous. But they attack so damn quickly that they pretty much stun lock you into death. After dying multiple times in a row to them, I, I kinda avoided them altogether. The fifth of today's creatures is called the Aeshna. The Aeshna, also known as the Glusty Warp, is a bumpy and rough-skinned water creature, four yards in length and resembling a stump overgrown with algae. With ten paws and jaws like cut saws, Aeshna live in swamplands, and the so-called liquid manure that forms much of the Pontar Delta definitely suits it especially with all the river traffic and the people and livestock aboard. They can use a mist as cover, not appearing in the sunlight as they become vulnerable. Their prehensile cephalic limbs with razor-sharp claws have great power, just like their tail fan. Actually believed not to exist by the scholars, as the Pontar Delta's pollution got worse, it became a feeding ground for the Aeshne and with the constant food source via people and livestock on the boats along the river, they could grow incredibly big to the point of pulling a cow out of a ship with no problem. In 1266, Geralt of Rivia would hunt some of these down, which were attacking barges owned by the Malatius and Grok company. One of the passengers, called Linus Pitt, an Oxenford professor, was adamant that no such being existed. However, as the boat ride went on, they were eventually attacked by one, and despite the danger, Linus excitedly proclaimed the family class and order it was in. Once it was gone, the scholar thanked the witcher for the new discovery, and offered to name it the Geraltia Maxillosa Pity. But Geralt requested it be called Everatia Maxillosa Pity, as Everett was the obnoxious young boy who'd been annoying them all day. Finally, for today, we have another two creatures, which I think are worthy of an honorary mention. They are the Barbegazi and the Gigascorpion. The Barbegazi are monsters which resemble dirty, hairy rocks. Unlike rocks, though, they also have very sharp teeth, and most creepily of all, can imitate human speech. They live in the deepest depths of mines and caves, often the same locations where one might find Vesper tails which are some bat-like animals. They are mentioned in the Tower of the Swallow story from the Witcher books. The Giga Scorpion is a creature that very few actually know about, and even fewer understand it. But one thing that is known about them is that they are basically very big scorpions. They can reach the size of a horse, and their poison kills within the hour, and if not helped, the victim dies from muscle spasm first. Poisoning is accompanied by severe hallucination too. The creature lives in the deserts and other arid areas, and is especially common in the sands of Zerikania. It is said that some shamans of the Korat desert nomads use a small concentration of gigascorpion venom to get themselves into a trance. And all this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the insectoids of the Witcher setting. There might have been a couple of others which had so little lore behind them, I didn't think they were worth mentioning. Even so, this video is arguably the most creature-heavy out of my entire Witcher series. I don't think I've ever mentioned seven monsters in any of them. I also hope you weren't too creeped out by any of these beasts, since at the end of the day, insectoids are a meaningful part of the Witcher bestiary. I would like to read your thoughts on them, though. Which of these did you find the most interesting or scary, and why? Do share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the episode, please consider supporting the series by watching to the end, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. Thanks a lot, and Melitale's blessings be upon you.